Mohammed Mohamed Farsi coming into the game. As he'll try to make a difference up top. Push to the outside, Farsi collects, gets that ball back into the corner, tries to swing that through into Usama Lagel, but it goes off his foot and out of play. And for those new to futsal, it's unlimited substitutions in front of their bench out there, so think on the fly changes just like ice hockey. DeMarco trying to get that pass coming to that far corner, trying to hit Kovacevic. Now DeMarco again going to hold in at the back. Sends that ball square. Kovacevic, great ball movement again, trying to get it over to DeMarco as DeMarco will pull it back. Holding now at the top is Rigi. Camposano stretches it up. Kovacevic trying to post up top. Goes off the chest and out of play. Goes past the touchline. It'll be an inbound up coming now for Sporting. As things starting to open up here. FCT with a couple of good opportunities. Sporting trying to play their way back in and regain some momentum. FCT holding in the defensive zone. Here's DeMarco. Goes cross to Kovacevic. Or to Rigi. Now Kovacevic up top, had DeMarco streaking, and then he cleared it in at the top, and that'll be out of bounds on FCT, so it'll be sporting ball on the side. And this is definitely the best test for outlaws of the entire season, whether it was in Quebec, foreign tournaments, or here at the national championships out there. And they're holding their own so far, they're showing a lot of composure, very meticulous and nice and slow on the ball. Not feeling pressured whatsoever from the 2015 national champs. Miguel drops it back to Misho up top to Farsi. And Farsi going down, very vocal, and he's down hard on the floor, kind of writhing in pain again. Mohamed Farsi just coming into the game, and a hard foul, and he's again down on that floor. And quite vocal as he goes down to the floor, Chris. We'll see if the trainers are going to have to come out here early for the Outlaws, and they certainly will. Certainly, he's one of the youngest kids in this entire tournament out here, born in 1999, if you can believe it, and already in a national championship. So he's definitely one of those players that we've seen who can run two ways across the court, big sideline player, and we really hope that he's not injured because he's an impact player that has a very bright future here in the Canadian futsal system. So we'll see. There was the foul call. So Farsi, again, still down on the floor. We'll see where things get set up here as the Outlaws will get a free kick from in range. But again, looking at some of the key players, looking at FCT, we've mentioned some of the players to watch out for for the Outlaws, including um, number 14, Shaq Misho, who, uh, who has the captain's band on right now for the Outlaws. Yeah, certainly Misho out there, 24-year-old kid, great speed, great intelligence out there, knows where to go, and it's going to be something to see him throughout the tournament. Other players that I personally really want to look forward to seeing throughout this entire competition. Number one is the goalkeeper from Futsal Club Toronto, David Camposano. Uh, back up to Joshua Lemos on the Canadian national team. Great player, great reflexes out there, as well as Brandon Medeiros, a personal favorite out there. The young 26-year-old coming out of the GTA out there, and he's going to be fantastic. And as we mentioned earlier, Brendan Samoj, another great player. And of course, one of the best defenders in this country, Eduardo Haragui unbelievable defender out there that can break it at any moment. So Farsi getting tended to on that far side. They're still awaiting a substitution and now upcoming will be shot coming in. It's a great crack through and on the board the Outlaws on the direct free kick through its number 17 Diadine Abzi and that's a big big time shot from the back end. The beautiful thing about futsal is the fact that it rewards the skillful player and not the physical player. And then what happens is, as we see the ball going out of bounds there, we see a lot of physical play in soccer and a lot of fit in hockey and other sports out there. But here, you're penalized for that stuff. And, you know, in that case, when you foul a guy and get an opportunity like that, dangerous, and now Outlaws up 1-0. Abzi capitalizing perfectly, and it's the Outlaws up early. But FCT going to try to counter in the early going to Marco. With the inbound, you see Camposano trying to direct traffic out of the back as Kovacevic collects, and they'll send it right back to the back end to Harigi. And now it's chipped through. DeMarco unable to get it loose as Fuentes collects and comes in to Misho. Stretch pass comes to the top and unable to collect, and it'll come back on the counter. Here comes Harigi. He's trying to send it to the outside. Can't quite get the switch around. Now as DeMarco goes off a leg. Now tipped inside. Here's a chance for FCT. Great ball movement again. Kovacevic. Trying to get it loose and goes off the leg of Misho. No, nope, they're going to say it went out off FCT. So it'll be an inbounds now for Sporting. Outlaws were definitely a little bit fortunate there. Some of the 
court unawareness, if you will, almost cost them a big key opportunity from about 12 meters out, and that's a team you do not want to have a point blank shot on your goalkeeper. Michaud sends that ball forward. Goes off of Adzi. Michaud now back at the back end. Fuentes in the crease and will hold on. Trying to get that ball pushed forward out of the hands. And now sporting again, capitalizing. Poke through just wide of the net. Camposano holding on his near post. Could have been 2-0 in the early going here for the Sporting Outlaws. And a hard foul now on Kovacovic to no call as he collapses hard down on the floor. But FCT will retain possession. Well, one thing we're going to see here that we didn't see at the Provincial Championships with Toronto United and Football Club Toronto is we're definitely going to see no nonsense taken whatsoever as we got the number one referee in the entire country from Montreal, Quebec, Chris Grabis in town. I was with him at the Copa North America last weekend. He is one of the best referees out there on the continent right now. Hopefully gets a FIFA badge at the end of the year because he's been absolutely spot on. And you have this as the native of Saskatchewan there, Octavian Iliota doing it up too. Coming back in the counter again. Great attack, that time from Usama Laguel, but just wide of the net, Camposano again, working his angles nicely and forcing that one to go outside. And for those watching at home, you obviously see just how action-packed this sport is. It's almost so hard to provide commentary over your excellent play-by-play -play because it just goes back and forth. If you're not hunting, you're being hunted in this sport. FCT again trying to pull through. DeMarco gets pushed down to the floor. Abzi trying to come back. Great move around to the outside. Left poke, and it's a slide up coming. Nice job there by number 21, Frankie Capone. And the Outlaws take the corner. Goes off Capone, and it'll be an inbounds again upcoming for the Outlaws. Yeah, they did not want Abzi taking that shot out there, and it was an excellent tackle there by Francesco Capone. Great pass in there for Michaud, getting taken down. Abzi goes, or Legale goes down hard. And the Outlaws again will have a free kick just outside that three-point line here on the floor. And we saw what they can do already on these spot kicks, Chris. We'll see if they go right back to the well here. Well, the players have to give a five meter distance as uh, we saw Octavio there deliver it out, but we can expect a set play, hopefully. Opting to take the shot instead. So settling back down, Misho to the outside, getting it through is Abzi again. The goal scorer for the Outlaws. And it's turned back over, FCT trying to come back in the counter. You hear Fuentes trying to direct traffic out of the crease for the Outlaws. Working nicely there, able to cut down the angle again. And DeMarco will try to inbound now for FCT. A lot of options to work with for DeMarco. He opts to go into the corner and just going to let that one run its course as Usama Legel follows that, play, that ball out of play. And it'll be an inbound upcoming now for the Outlaws. And it's pushed forward there by Legel. And trying to go into the corner, but off the foot of Anas Sakin. And DeMarco again will kick in for FCT. And the one thing sporting, they want to avoid at all costs is giving FCT space out there. They're very experienced players playing in multiple futsal leagues in Toronto over the years. Coming back in the counter, here's a chance for FCT. Move to the inside. Great job defensively that time by Shaquille Michaud. He showed a big athletic defender out there is certainly not going to want to give any space to players, especially of the caliber of Francesco Compone. The Outlaws take the inbound and send back in here down to the near side for Diadine Abzi, and it's a stretch ball trying to push into that far corner over to Osama Legel, but it goes out of play, so FCT will collect and put the ball back into play on the side here from DeMarco. Here is Mar Marcello Ortel. Very experienced player, played for years in Toronto, multiple leagues out there. An exceptional guy off the court as well, super friendly, one of the better players out here in the country. Here comes FCT back again. They try to get it through to Ortel, and it slides right through, and it'll go out of bounds once again as Francesco Capone was up top trying to collect for FCT. Misho at the back end for the Outlaws and a hard down to the floor, but it'll go all the way back down, and Camposano will collect inside the crease. Well, we see with the number three of Futsal Club Toronto there, Eduardo had a fantastic defender, as we said, but he does have a tendency sometimes to you know, foul very hard. Here comes a three-on-one back the other way for the Outlaws. Unable to make a push through his Michel, but gets it back again. Score! 
Shaquille Michaud breaks it 2 nothing for the Outlaws. And just as we thought that it was a missed opportunity with the 3v1 out there, Michaud picks up the ball and absolutely blasts it. No chance for Camposano. And now the Outlaws putting a 2-0 lead on the champions from 2015. Shocker early here on, Kyle. It is a timeout and then well needed here for the Futsal Club Toronto. And not as we expected here in the early going, Chris. 2 nothing is the lead in favor of the Sporting Outlaws, the champions out of Quebec. That we mentioned coming into this tournament have a lot of youth on their side, but perhaps that's a lot of energy they have that uh, at times FCT may not be able to, to stand with stride for stride. You're absolutely spot on about that. Usually we see a lot of young players come in, they get frazzled, they think they're playing against some experienced players, especially FCT, a team that won the national tournament two years ago. And ultimately these guys have come in composed like seasoned veterans and a 2-0 lead here just six minutes into the first half. They're commanding respect automatically right off the top. Now a 2-0 lead as you would expect in the outdoor game. Perhaps something that's tough to come back from, especially this early on. But Chris, futsal, the game so fast, opens up very quickly. And FCT taking a timeout early on here. Make some adjustments and they can be right back in this at the drop of the hat. And that's exactly what we're going to expect them to see coming out of this timeout. Well, you see a two-goal lead in soccer is big. You see a two-goal lead in hockey is big. You see a two-goal in most sports. It's big. But here in futsal, because of the stop clock nature, because of the fast-paced nature, it is absolutely imperative that the Outlaws maintain their composure defensively because two goals could be eliminated in the blink of an eye. So out of that last goal from the Outlaws, it'll be a kickoff from midcourt. As FCT tries to rebound, holding possession in the defensive zone. Trying to streak it forward now, and it's intercepted back again. Here's Abzi. And that's taken right back by FCT. Held that time on the inside there by Lagelle. And it'll come near side. FCT trying to get it out of the defensive zone, and it's turned over again. And Camposano has to be big right on top and makes perhaps his best save of the game so far. Yeah, defensive laps there almost cost FCT going down 3-0, but Camposano, the veteran that he is, the national team player, you know, when you bring that kind of caliber to the table, and he is wearing the captain's armband for this team, it's going to take a lot more for the Outlaws to come in and extend this to a three-goal lead. See number 18, Quanti Abbott Hill-Smith out there now for FCT. Some mainstays still on the floor, including DeMarco at the back, but it's intercepted and will come back past midcourt, and we push forward, FCT retaining possession. Francesco Capone, that striker in up top for FCT right now, but a lot of movement, a lot of positional movement. DeMarco will play it in, goes, tries to get Capone going down into the corner, a little miscommunication there between the two FCT stars. Well, what we're seeing right now from FCT, it's a little bit of nerves out there. They're just, you know, finding their stride. But again, it is early on, the first game of the tournament out there. So ultimately, they're going to sit there, compose themselves, Great experienced players. They're going to maneuver the ball out there and try to get some of this uh, inexperienced players. Ortel working up top with DeMarco, and now Ortel just outside the touchline on that far side. Seemed That'll like it was out of bounds for a good couple of meters there before the whistle was called. So Misho drops it off, and a shot from range trying to squeeze one through was Manuel Chavez. And it goes off a leg, and it'll be another kick in from the side upcoming from Sporting. Back to Misho. Trying to get someone stretching through. Chavez up top. The chance now for the Outlaws. Great move to the inside. Camposano makes a save, deflecting off the leg at the back there from Eduardo, Eduardo Harigi. Uh, to the outside, FCT now. Again, Camposano directing traffic from the back end. Almost turned over again in the defensive zone. Camposano just going to clear it out. Great direction there with the chest and trying to squeeze it through the legs there of Misho and get the ball back over to Mario Kovacevic but to no avail. Hard crack from the back end from FCT this time from Eduardo Harigi. Can't quite get it through as it goes up to the over top. Intercepted there by Ortel. Ortel trying to lay it off. Great contact there. Move to the outside, and it's answered back the other way from FCT. Goes off a leg of Ortel, and it'll be an inbounds upcoming now, again from the Outlaws, but a little more confidence, it looks as though, from FCT right now. Well, they're certainly not showing that inexperience and that youth, that's for sure. These guys are not only athletic, but they are composed, and a great job by that coaching staff, led by Nicolas Boulmet and Lamidi Marouin. If my French is insulting anybody, I'm apologizing in advance. I will work on that, but Kyle, your French last name hopefully does a little more justice. 
Push coming from the back end from Harigi. It's collected at the back from Fuentes. They're trying to again read that stretch ball coming to the top there to Manny Chavez, but unable to squeeze it through. And some subs up coming now from FCT. That's right, we're seeing two players come out, including Ortel. Isaiah Reed making his first appearance on the floor, number 10 for FCT. And they will have a corner to start things off here as staying out on the floor, we'll likely see him for the most part as Matias DeMarco, who Chris mentioned off the top, one of the better players in this tournament. And we'll likely see a lot of minutes in the games this weekend. Certainly, DeMarco was part of Canada's team that went to CONCACAF and eliminated the United States. As we see it, a good set play attempt there by FCT. DeMarco still with it in the corner. Battling on that far side with Usama Laguel. Again, we're gonna be one of the mainstays of this sporting roster throughout the weekend. They try to come back on the counter. Legal waiting for it on the near side. Great move to the inside, shot released. Big save by Camposano. The rebound is there, but he does make the save on that shot through from Manny Chavez. Posting it up top, Kavakovic. Kavakovic still with it. Comes to the outside to Reed. Isaiah Reed pokes through, can't get it loose. Good save at the back. And now Zamarco collects from the outside. Kavakovic trying to get it right back to DeMarco. And it goes out of play. But again, good offensive movement here up top now from FCT as they try to get their way back into this game. We're seeing the lines mixed up with youth and experience here at uh, FCT, particularly with Eduardo, Eduardo Haragle as well as Marco DeMarco coming off. But the real young player, Isaiah Reed, just turned 20 back in February out there. He's one of the most promising young prospects coming out of Ontario out there, and he's definitely picked it up over the last season, to say the least. Ball comes to the inside. They're trying to get it sent through to Hugo Rodriguez. Tries to get that pass across, and here's a good counter back. Michaud trying to get it, and it goes off his leg. Kept in at the touchline. Great job to hang on. Here's Isaiah Reed. Reed still with the ball. Can't quite get it through, and just going to clear it out of harm's reach. There is Fuentes. As you see Michaud again, the captain of this Sporting Outlaws team, vocalizing his concerns with his team's defensive play on that sequence through. So again, the pressure mounting here for FCT, but they still find themselves down 2-0. Chip to the far side, Kavakovic with a header across, and the save nicely there, and Michel gets tripped up on the inside. We should see a card here. Card. No question, good call, but also a good foul taken. You know, you had a 3v1 situation out there, and last thing you want is to have that happen when you're down 2-0, so it was an excellent taken foul there by Futsal Club Toronto. Third of the half. So, Paragay gonna take a seat for now on the FCT bench, that's a loss for FCT certainly as Reed comes back trying to switch it inside. They're gonna FCT a little incensed on the non-call and here's a chance to make it three and they do. The Outlaws up 3-0. Well FCT is a little unhappy because they thought the defender passed back to the keeper but ultimately the referees as well as myself saw that as just a light touch. Keeper picks it up and goes in but what a beautiful, beautiful finish that was by Manuel Chavez Melendez to give a commanding 3-0 lead for the Quebec champions. The assist getting credited to number 17, Dianian Abzi, who's been excellent so far here in this first half for the Outlaws. A goal and now a big time assist, 3-0 for the youngsters as they try to continue this offensive onslaught here in the first half against FCT. And it's another turnover in the offensive zone. Coming back, it's a two-on-one here for the Outlaws. Great pass across, holding up. Left shot through, still in the crease, and now it's poked loose by the Outlaws, and it'll be FCT possession. I don't think a single person in the country could have come in saying FCT was going to be down 3-0 just 60 minutes into the first half out here. Absolutely unbelievable performance and tenacity from this Sporting Outlaws side. Zaya Reed in the defensive zone, trying to get it past center court, and he will. Reed. Push over to the far side, trying to get it across, and it's still kept in at the top from FCT as it's Rodriguez. Goes to the far side to Reed. Now the post downside to Abbott Hill Smith. Again, another counter here from the Outlaws. Lays it off. That was way too much space given there by FCT, and you do not want these Outlaws with the confidence and swagger they're bringing to go out and take another attempt shot with a good couple of meters in front of that keeper. Reed trying to take on in the one on one. But his ball gets pushed to the outside. As you see Hugo Rodriguez with the inbound here, goes up top to Kavakovic into the corner and it's poked loose by Misho. As he's gonna stay right in tight on Kavakovic. Kavakovic, that huge frame, trying to post in up top and allow some possession to filter through him. As Rodriguez turns it over off the inbound. 
Counter coming again from the Outlaws. Push to the outside, great save. Camposano rebound is there, and that'll be off FCT. It'll be a possession on the sideline, and that's that experience coming through. Big save there from Camposano. Absolutely, and he's not happy one bit with his defenses. He was absolutely chirping them right there and saying, guys, we cannot go down 4-0. Make sure you contain these guys, and let's slow it down and get back to our game. It's another chance for the Outlaws, and it's blocked at the back end, and Reed coming, trying to come through in the counter. But it's intercepted there by Michaud. Almost turned over again, and it is Reed. Holding again at center court, battling with Michaud. FCT trying to get something set up out of the defensive zone. Holding into the corner, getting double teamed, and that'll be last touched out by the Outlaws, and it'll be inbounded up now, coming from Hugo Rodriguez. The substitution's continuing as Brandon Simos comes on for FCT. We see number 12 taking the kick in. Hugo Rodriguez, also part of the national program out there. Great player, turning 30 this year. Kravakovic drops to the back end. The shot was there from Quanti Abbott Hill Smith. But it goes out of play and it'll be an inbound possession from the back end from Fuentes. Trying to get that stretch ball coming to the top. Nobody posting up top this time from the Outlaws. So Camposano will collect. A great ball up top for two Kavakovic on the deck. And last touched out. As you see the officials making the call but much to the chagrin of Anas Sakine. Rodriguez, great ball to the far side. Kavakovic with the flick. Goes up over the top, make that number nine. Hugo Rodriguez, oh, excuse me, Brandon Simos goes the flicks over top of the top of the crossbar. Uh, Brandon Simos, fantastic. 24 year old kid out of Toronto, Ontario, five foot 11. Very dynamic player. Portuguese background coming out, playing in the Spanish leagues, the Toronto Futsal League out there, and he's just been a real dynamite surprise player this year for FCT. Look to the top. They're going to call that a corner, as they're saying, went off the hands there of Camposano. So looked a bit unorthodox on the toss there from, from Fuentes, but getting a flick on the head goes off the hands of Camposano, and they win a corner out of it. Pass to the back end. Goes off another leg. And trying to keep it in are the outlaws. Can't hold possession, is it just gonna go out of play? And Camposano will play it right back in. And received a little bit of that inexperience there from the Outlaws. Great ball coming in, Kovacovic unable to capitalize and flick it up over top of Fuentes. But a great play coming out of the back end from FCT. And hard now on the floor. It was an off the ball foul, look as though on the deck now is Anas Sakine for the Quebec champions and again, Getting clipped hard, as I think he made contact there with Quanti Abbott Hill Smith. Well, he fell hard, but he just got up as hard as out there. The 23-year-old out there from Quebec, great post-up player, very tall, can really control with that wingspan of his at the post position. Sakina going to stay on the floor, and again the FCT faithful, not happy with that. Comes to the near side, shot comes loose, can't get a full foot on it, and. Tough clearance there from FCT, but it stays inside. It was off the arm. Abbott Hill Smith called on the on their FCT will come out of the defensive zone. Abbott Hill Smith collecting at the back end. Demarco sends it in up top. Demarco now coming in for support. Abbott Hill Smith at the back will hold on that far sideline. Has an option to come square. Decides to turn and go to the outside. Now has an option in the middle. Great post there up top from FCT. Can't quite get a shot released. And now Michaud coming back in to defend. Good job up top, though, from FCT's Frankie Capone as he was able to make a great post, collect the ball, but couldn't quite get the shot away he wanted, Chris. Yeah, now we see Abzi going down out there for Sporting Outlaws, trying his best to contain the excellent offensive prowess that we've seen so far from uh, Francesco Capone who's not really had much to work with so far here in the first half, and FCT is going to really need to revamp out there if they're really going to attack, but ultimately they have much more experience, much more accolades out there. They've played a lot more games this season, so hopefully they can continue to press out there and keep Outlaws on their heels, but definitely the defense from this Quebec side has been astounding thus far in this game. So Abzi still down in the Outlaws' crease. So we'll see if there's going to be a substitution upcoming for him. Again, he's had himself quite the first half he scored the opening goal on that spot kick and had a great job in the counterattack, laying the ball off to Manuel Chavez Melendez on the third goal for the Sporting Outlaws and again they still lead three to nil with the expiration of the first half upcoming 
Yeah, and again, we can't talk about the youth being such a factor out here. We thought the inexperience might hurt him. The oldest player on the team here for the Outlaws is 28 years old, and that's Jose Alberto Nerio, the only player on this team born in the 1980s. Kind of makes you feel a little bit old now, doesn't it, Kyle? Stretch ball trying to come out of the back end. will go out of play. So DeMarco will inbound as he's done time and time again on this near sideline. Gets that ball trying to get it across to Abbott Hill Smith. Who throws up a thumbs up to DeMarco at the back end. Appreciating that ball coming through but couldn't quite get possession of it. Misho goes off Abbott Hill Smith. And now Sporting trying something else. Knocks out some of the signage on that far side. Taking the inbound is Brandon Nario, number 13 for the Sporting Outlaws. And he is on that far touch line inbounding the ball. Look at the size of him for a 19-year-old kid. Nario inbound, trying to streak it through. Abbott Hill-Smith trying to get around Nario and get a shot on target. But Nario, again, with that huge frame, able to turn it around. And another foul called on FCT. So it'll be a spot kick in the defensive zone for the Outlaws. We'll see how many fouls, if we can get a good look at it, Chris. And we'll see how many fouls the team has as a collection. And the shot comes through from number seven, Manny Chavez Melendez. Just wide of the net, though, Camposano is steering that one aside. We were talking about fouls a moment ago, and for those not too familiar with futsal, we talked about the beauty of the sport focusing on the skill. And FCT has four fouls. Each team is permitted five fouls per half. And after every foul after that results in an unopposed kick against the keeper from 10 meters out, as you see that second white dot just north of the goal crease. So they got to be very careful here not to foul out and concede even more scoring opportunities to the outlaws. Here's DeMarco on the near touch line. Drops it to the back end. Camposano was calling for it, but they uh, opt to go to the far side instead. Can FCT break through here before the end of the first half and play their way back in? Here's a turnover again. It's a two-on-one for the Outlaws. Go to the far side. Poke through Camposano. Big save. Now they've got numbers working forward. Can FCT counter? They let, try to lay it off. Abbott Hill-Smith now on the far side. He's got options to the inside. Goes off his foot. Abbott Hill-Smith release off the post. Fuentes covers up. And that was dangerous. First of all, Camposano with that big-time save. 4-0 would have been absolutely brutal going into the half. But great job by the goalkeeper to do that. But Outlaws really got to make sure that they're coming to run back when those opportunities are capitalized on because there was a wide-open FCT player on that far post, and a tap-in would have made it 3-1. Chip coming from, from Simos, and now tip to the outside. DeMarco is streaking through, and now the Outlaws bench satisfied with their defensive effort. but see if they can pick it up and keep things at 3-0 heading into the half. Uh, they're certainly going to watch that far post because FCT is starting to expose them here in the last 30, 40 seconds two times, and you do not want to have that against an experienced side. And here's a counter back the other way for the Outlaws. Can they chip through? And they do, and the score It's 4-0 for the Sporting Outlaws. This is absolutely unbelievable stuff here from the Quebec champions. These young kids are coming out and meaning business. That breakaway attempt, defensive lapse there by FCT, and a great capitalized effort there by Osama. Laguel to put auto Sporting Outlaws up 4-0. Unreal stuff. Yeah. And another turnover, but unable to read. I think going down to the floor and injure to that far. But FCT not trying to labor through here. It's coming off. I think not got the wind knocked out of him here on that near side. They'll make a substitution and get back to even strength here. They were a man down there momentarily, and that could have been another turnover in a two-on-one. Gets through the legs there of Reed as Fuentes collects in the crease. Fuentes pushing forward off the leg and out of play. Again, that could have been a horror show, and that's going to be a timeout now for the Sporting Outlaws. 4-0 the lead right now for the Quebec champs over FCT, the Ontario champions. And again, heading into tomorrow's games, Chris, this could be an absolutely massive change in what we expected in terms of the standings certainly and for more information about the tournament you can go to canadasoccer.com in both english en francais and get the lay down of what's happening goal scorers and all the information you need in futsal in the country but also it's important to note that this is a three-team tournament this year we finally have saskatchewan a third province coming in to complement what's happened in the past two years which has seen the winners of ontario versus the winner of quebec so tomorrow we're going to see at 11 a.m saskatchewan coming in to play their first game and then over later at seven o'clock before the top two kind of like memorial cup style a little bit where the top two go on on sunday and that will decide the actual championship but i'll tell you right now 
Outlaws really making a statement of intent to everybody in the country with their play. Certainly, again, the Quebec champions out to a 4-0 lead at the moment. FCT trying their best to regroup here in the huddle after the timeout taken by Sporting. And again, as Chris mentioned, the Saskatchewan champions will be coming in tomorrow. That is Saskatoon Olympia. So we will see them tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Eastern time. And again, if you are not in Kingston or in the area to come down and watch, you can join us coast to coast through our live feed on YouTube. And what should be another exciting two days plus of futsal action and some of the best futsal players in the country. Michaud in the defensive half, trying to send it through up top. Can't quite get it through to Sakine, who seems to be fine after going down to the deck earlier. Pass out of the back, here's Reed. Reed looking for options coming through the cross, the middle of the court. Flick, and now here's, here's Reed on that far side. Great shot from Reed, but just wide of the net. But a great development out of the back there from FCT. Yeah, they're definitely going to want that one goal coming in to the, sec the beginning of the second half out there. It'll just give them that momentum and that swagger that they're notorious for to really come in against this outlaw side, who, again, have surprised with this 4-0 lead. Misho heads that clearing attempt back in, and it's a volley on that far side just going by the near post. Great crack through from Manuel Chavez. Camposano will clear it out. Great job forward from him. But Misho will let that trickle out. And they're going to say possession staying with Sporting. Misho gets it past Reed, posting up a Sakine. And he poked loose, and FCT will come back in the counter. Kovakovic back to Reed. And now Camposano is going to come out and give way for another attacker as they try desperately to get on the scoreboard before the half. Reed can't quite stretch it through. So high risk, high reward here, Chris, with the extra attacker leaving that crease open from Camposano. Certainly, and the rule is the goalkeeper can come back out. Oh, great save there by the goalkeeper out from Sporting. But as we were talking about, Matias DeMarco, as you see him running off the court out there, he's an attacker. And now Camposano, the real goalkeeper, goes back in. So you can utilize the fifth attacker like a hockey power play, essentially. And ultimately, FCT, one of the best teams in the country in doing that. Fuentes with another high arcing throw. Camposano comes out to the top of the arc and punches that one out of harm's reach. Great court awareness there by Camposano to make sure he didn't get a handball outside of the crease there. And Abzi... The one falling victim to the punch clearing there from Camposano. And now Reed will collect for FCT. Reed with a bunch of space to work with. Lays it off to the right. Reed still trying to poke it through and can't quite get it there. And that'll be touched off of Reed and out of play. So possession stays with Sporting. Misho trying to get that stretch through. They're going to call the ball coming back in on that far side. Yeah, I think what uh, Octavio, the second referee over there, was calling was that the foot was in the court from the Outlaws player, and you got to make sure that it's at least a little bit on the line, but not fully planted inside the court. So on that turnover, we see DeMarco once again as the extra attacker for FCT, and he will get the ball now here on this left side. DeMarco goes far side once again. Shot from the back end. Reed posting it up top and trying to get that ball through. And it goes well over top of everything and up into the... Top part here of the Athletics and Recreation Center and out of play, so it'll stay possession now for the Outlaws. Fuentes. Ball flick forward again. As you see, Abzi trying to get that ball through. And some of the little bit of inexperience, I hate to even use that word, just especially with a dominating performance that the Sporting Outlaws have given, but the little things, the little things is what make the difference out there. When you're stuck in the corner, you don't have to necessarily shoot in a very awkward angle out there. Just sit on the ball, you're up 4-0, let this team come out and attack you. The worst case scenario, hey, they take possession, but you're still in play as opposed to giving it up. So DeMarco back out onto the floor. Harigi has the ball at the top. Now to DeMarco. And they call it out of bounds, so DeMarco is going to have to run his way back as Camposano will jump back into the crease from the touchline. Misho holds on and will stretch that ball down. and just going to clear it out as Misho couldn't quite get anyone coming across, intended maybe for Manny Chavez. Kovakovic at center court, looking for a streak on that far side. Kovakovic still with possession, keeps it to the outside. FCT now with some pressure in the attacking zone. As Kovakovic trying to get through, they're going to call the foul. 
on the Sporting Outlaw, so it'll be FCT possession inside, just outside the three-point line on the far side. So still trying to get a call, and they're going to try to clean things up on the floor. And now with the extra attacker, Matias DeMarco, again, national team player in the orange goalkeeper jersey out here to the left. As they give a nice wipe on that floor, you do not want to wipe out over here. It's like watching Wile E. Coyote and those old cartoons there, Kyle. Unforgiving stuff, but speaking tactics out here, we got the goalkeeper, Matias DeMarco, a.k.a. the attacker in this scenario, coming out, and he's going to want to have that ball and maneuver it. And in futsal, as a goalkeeper, you can touch the ball as many times as you want and for as long as you want once you cross center court. And this is where the attack comes out here. As you see the Pentagon formation here of FCT, a lot of space exploited. Let's see if they can utilize it. So using that extra attacker, trying to generate some space. DeMarco, pass goes to the far side. Comes back into the Harigi. Pass again to that outside, trying to generate a lane to shoot through. Harigi. Now an option. Great shot through and a big time save. Fuentes able to see that coming from far range and makes a good touch with the gloves and pushes it out of play. But it's still in the attacking zone here is FCT. Harigi to DeMarco. Back to Harigi at the top. He's got Reed in the corner. Back to DeMarco. Move to the inside. Far side again. Posting up there, Reed, great move to the inside. That's deflected out, it should be a corner. But they're gonna call it, and it is gonna be a corner on the on the far side. DeMarco, still in up top, left alone. It'll come back to Harigi. DeMarco, he's got an option, Kavakovic down in the corner. Up to the top again, can't quite get the poke loose. And as Chris made alluded to with the potential of looking like a power play sequence, the penalty kill, so to speak, Chris, this defensive stand here from Sporting really holding strong here as Misho pushes in on DeMarco. Well, there's two and a half minutes left here in the first half, and Outlaws are going to need to contain this box defensive formation because this is the most dangerous line for FCT as we see that pass coming in there from Eduardo Jaraguay. You see that format all the time. Two guys going to each post out there, and if someone picks it up, it's going to be a little tap-in, and that'll give FCT that confidence. Fuentes with the stretch ball up, able to collect on the far side, but is now turned over as Camposano makes his way back into the crease for FCT. But waiting to get right back on the floor is DeMarco. Reed has it on the far side, and it's intercepted, and now perhaps going to see a booking with no, as Reed will collect in the defensive zone, and they're going to say it's... No, it will be FCT possession. Yeah, so that'll be an accumulated foul there on Abzi. Stretch ball coming up, and Fuentes able to collect as Kovacevic was in tight. Here's Misho in the defensive zone. Misho just going to clear it up. Battling on that far side, Harage. It wasn't the best distributed ball there by Fuentes out there. FCT, they're going to pressure you all the time. They don't want you to have space. That's where they thrive. That's where they're strong. Here's Reed down the left wing, and right back on cue. Here comes DeMarco. DeMarco at the top. Goes to the far side, Harage. Back to DeMarco. He's got a space to work with. Here's Kavakovic. Chip ball coming across. Reed able to save it. In the corner, now the hand goes up. Tough break there for FCT. Kavakovic a little too heavy on the touch. Trying to flick it across and get it in. As we now have two minutes remaining here in the opening half. And that was a very nasty looking offensive series there. Great players for FCT on that. So good job on the outlaws defensively to hold these guys. Kovacevic, hard back, collects the ball, and he's now got it on the near side. And a hard slide there from Sporting as Kovacevic gets taken down. So it will be, this is now four fouls apiece, Chris. That's right. We got the great staff down there. David Figliano, guy who got his start over with my league over in Toronto. Great guy. And Alexis Vaughn, one of the top officials in the country out there. Women, outdoor game as well. And uh, they're just giving us the signals, letting us know exactly what's happening on there at center court. Marco pushes far side. Jorge inside Reed. Back to Jorge at the top. DeMarco poked through off the crossbar rebound. Still loose and Fuentes with another big save. FCT just smacking their heads right now, wondering what is it going to take to get a goal against this young sporting outlaw side out there. A great shot that hit the crossbar and just a lack of finish on that rebound out there. And they're just shaking their heads, wondering what can they do to get back in this game. That toe poke from DeMarco going off the crossbar. It was the best shot they've had coming through in this extra attacker situation. They've still got an opportunity here. Back to Harage at the top. Another poke, and it's a save. And a great job, and now DeMarco with a with late contact and the official there to make the call. As DeMarco trying to get that ball 
coming off the touch. And perhaps that could be a card, Chris. Uh, that was clearly a foul out there as he kicked the keeper coming out out there. And ultimately, the last guy who wants to get ejected is Matias Demarco. He's one of the best players in the entire country out there. But his leg, he got maybe a little bit frustrated in what's been happening so far in this first half. And now they fouled out. So every foul FCT concedes will result in an unopposed 10-meter shot for the Outlaws. A little under two minutes to go. We'll see if they can stay off as DeMarco will come right back on. Post goes inside to Reed, centering pass, trying to get it through. And now we'll come back in the counter. DeMarco has to be strong defensively, and that's going to be a foul. And the spot kick now, DeMarco furious right now, and he's going to get a yellow card. Yeah, we're going to see uh, referee Chris Grabis. As we said, this guy right now is pound for pound, probably the best futsal referee in the entire country, and a good call there. Sees the yellow card go to Matias DeMarco. But now, even more importantly, 4-0 lead for Outlaws. This will result in an unopposed 10-meter shot directly against FCT's David Camposano. Imagine going up 5-0 against the former national champions of 2015. This is an absolute dream start that nobody could have thought possible. A potential five-goal cushion heading into halftime. Now out to take the kick is going to be number four, Ibrahim Malouf. As he, again, he will set up from the 10-meter mark and will drop back in Camposano. We'll try to defend, but Malouf with a free kick here to pot potentially make it 5-0. And he goes right top. What an absolutely breathtaking strike from the spot there from Malouf. This 23-year-old kid is playing like he's been playing for 15 seasons. Absolutely composed, big boot, puts it up top where Camposano can't reach out. 5-0 for Sporting Outlaws. Unbelievable stuff here from Queen's University in Kingston at the first opening championship game. Still continuing with the extra attacker. May as well not stop now, but it's been big half for Fuentes, as you see, trying to get things slowing down. As Camposano now has to scramble back in, potential to make that 6-0. As another miscommunication there from DeMarco and Camposano. And now DeMarco getting into it with the head coach. Well, you had the uh, switch there that wasn't really the best out there. And fortunately for FCT, Chavez missed that opportunity to put it 6-0. And that would have been a real stretch to come back in the second half. But if there is a team that can do it, this is definitely one of them here from Futsal Club Toronto. So we're going to see how they adapt going into the end of the first half. In the final 30 seconds now of the opening half, 5-0 the lead for the Sporting Outlaws over FCT. Pass goes into the corner. Again, FCT trying to break through and get on the scoreboard. Pass comes to the far side as DeMarco unable to get it across. Rodriguez off the post, and what a shot there. Now coming back in the counter. Chipping over top, going to drop in, and it will. 6-0, Sporting Outlaws. Wow, this is absolutely unbelievable stuff out there. A lovely, lovely chip that absolutely had no chance of being stopped out there and the outlaw six nothing who would have thought here in the opening of the futsal canadian championships and a well-deserved round of applause for the sporting outlaws here at the end of the first half they lead futsal club toronto chris six nil and i know from your days involved in the toronto league seeing a team like futsal club toronto down six nil to the quebec champs who again have a lot of youth on their side what do they do at halftime to try to get adjusted here? Uh, they got to be composed out there. You know their assistant coach, Nelson Pavelet, is going to be coming in and trying to tell them, hey, guys, we got to slow it down and play our game out here. This fifth attacker stuff isn't going to be working too well unless we can deliver and make sure at the back defensively we're solid. So they're going to really have to revamp and come out strong. Otherwise, they're in for a rough ride in that second half, just like they were in the first. So, Chris, 6-0 in favor of the Quebec champs over the Ontario champs here in game number one of the Futsal Canadian Championship. We will be right back for second half action here to see if FCT can play their way back in here at the Arc in Kingston, Ontario.
And welcome back to the Athletics and Recreation Center here in Kingston, Ontario, on the campus of Queen's University. It is the 2017 Futsal Canadian Championship, game number one of the weekend. The kickoff was at 7 o'clock p.m., and what a first half it was for our Quebec champions, the Sporting Outlaws FC. Chris, they lead Futsal Club Toronto, the Ontario champions, 6-0. Highly unexpected. We can talk about that all game long, but out here, you know, FCT's coming out with that fifth attacker and really trying to get some of that momentum to start off. Yeah, FCT going to try to employ this extra attacker in the offensive zone here. They've got DeMarco here on the near side, as they had for most of that end of that first half, trying to use the extra space on the floor and the extra attacker to get shots in on Fuentes and try to get themselves back in this game. And again, as Chris mentioned, a shocking start as DeMarco goes back to the top. Over to Hurage. He's got it back at the top. Shot from range. Goes off a foot. And now trying to get cleared out. And coming back in the counter. It's a shot from range. And just as we saw in the first half, the scoring continues for the Outlaws. And you can see across the court, the coach of the Canadian national team, our good friend Kit Saladopoulos out there, very impressed. And seeing some young players out of his home province of Quebec and going, the future is bright for Canadian futsal. 7-0 Outlaws just under a tick here in the first or this is the second half as fct again continuing this strategy with the extra attacker they're going to try have to claw their way back in it's a huge hole now a seven goal hole to climb out of we talked about how futsal it's easy to come back from a deficit but certainly chris not anything easy about coming back from seven goals down well, certainly nothing is insurmountable in futsal, but you definitely said it's 7-0. This is a difficult one. Only in the first minute of the second half, and this outlaw side is so composed and so reliant on each other. It's a fine, well-tuned machine right here coming out of Quebec. So, Chris, does it get to the point where FCT will change their strategy and try to just play this back at even strength? Because they're conceding goals off this extra attack situation, or do they try just to keep going? as there's really no difference between a 7-0 and perhaps a 10-11-0 deficit. Well, you know what, we're going to have to see uh, the goals for and the goals against after, and, you know, starting off minus 7 would be an absolute disaster for a team of this caliber, but the reality of the situation is they really have no choice if they want to cut that goals against uh, down in half because right now they sit there, if they can bring it to 7-1, 7-2, who knows what they can do? And there's a poke through, trying to get it through Fuentes and get their first goal of the game, but it comes to the outside. Reed going to stretch it across to DeMarco, has got some time and space to work with. Yeah. DeMarco. Goes far side, Hurage. Shot from range. Nope. Going to fake and go to the outside. Reed. Back to Hurage at the top. Comes to DeMarco on the near side. DeMarco back to the top. They get a poke through. Great job. And goes off the head of Misho to see if he's okay. That was a hard toe poke from the back end from Hurage. Goes right into the face of Misho, not seeing that ball come through. Again, hits him square in the face, and he's down on the floor. Oh, the 24-year-old captain of this Sporting Outlaw side just took that vicious shot to the head, and that absolutely stings. Anybody who has ever been hit with a futsal ball knows that it is absolutely unforgiving. It takes a certain amount of uh, fortitude to get inside that goal to actually stop this, but when you're a defender and unexpectedly take one right in the noggin, it definitely does not feel good. And, Chris, it's a bit different from, and not just in terms of size, from a, from a traditional soccer ball again a little bit of a dead weight to the ball trying to prevent any bounce on this hard gym floor again so the ball a little bit different than what you would normally see from a soccer ball so again that hurts taking it straight off the face especially from a hard shot from Hurtigay coming off that toe poke a lot of pace on it and hits Misho square in the face again hopefully he's going to be okay as he's been instrumental in this 7-0 lead for the outlaws so far yeah, we certainly don't want to see any concussions of injuries or sorts. You know, for years, back when you and I were playing, Kyle, concussions really weren't kind of an important thing. It was always about, you know, your bell was wrong. Don't worry, get back in and sit for five minutes. But now we know the science, obviously, and, you know, we got to make sure here the Queen's University staff as well as the health staff of Canada Soccer, they're certainly taking no chances in making sure that our athletes, our coaches, and our referees are protected. So, again, if you are just joining us, it is a 7-0 lead for the Quebec champions, the Sporting Outlaws FC, as they're taking on the Ontario Powers Futsal Club Toronto. But, Chris, we should see, again, we mentioned the third team participating in this weekend's tournament. The first time we're seeing a Saskatchewan group coming uh, in this national tournament, and it is Saskatoon Olympia, uh, and we should see them in their first action tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Eastern time. 
Well, I can tell you, you know, a lot of people think, oh, Saskatchewan, not a powerhouse over in soccer, and why would they be in futsal? But the reality of the situation is, in my opinion, they have the best coach in this entire tournament there in Colombian native Jaime Meza, who moved up there. And looking at the roster, they got some very good athletes, including one name that surprised to see out there is former Ontario-based player Fitzroy Christie. The 35-year-old is just one of the absolute fastest and most composed defenders out there. And to have him added to Saskatchewan roster gives instant credibility to their provincial champions. And we mentioned we, we, we haven't seen a lot out of Saskatoon Olympia and we haven't seen much coming out of Sask or Saskatchewan futsal but as we've seen here in the early part of this tournament anything can happen and right now it's been an onslaught for the Sporting Outlaws FC again we knew coming in they would pose a threat to pulling off the minor upset here against Futsal Club Toronto but a 7-0 lead at the moment um, something to draw the headlines for sure as we still see Michaud down on the on the deck getting tended to by the medical staff certainly and, and you just have to absolutely tip your hat off to the coaching staff here over of Sporting Outlaws Nicholas Boulme just ab doing a phenomenal job I can't even put it into words just to come in with a 7-0 opening Friday lead so far and again the game is not over but that is a certain statement of intent and you know Saskatchewan's in the crowd I can see them right now watching and they're sitting there saying hey we got to make sure we're ready for these boys tomorrow so again, the first game tomorrow will take place at 11 a.m. Eastern time. And then during the day will be a futsal clinic for those uh, youth in the Kingston area. As now we see Michaud trying to make his way to his feet and will likely come out for an extended period of time, perhaps even the rest of this game, Chris. Again, 7-0 the lead. Still not insurmountable by any means. This game far from over, but right now with a seven-goal cushion, perhaps not best to push him back into action before he's ready to go. It would be absolutely foolish to put in Michaud with this 7-0 lead out there. He's been the rock for this team in this game out here. Give him a rest. Let him sit for tomorrow's game out there and let uh, some of the uh, you know guys with lesser playing time come in and try to make a name for themselves and contribute to the Sporting Outlaws' uh, big 7-0 lead so far. So it'll be a corner kick from FCT. Comes back to the back end again. DeMarco still out there as the extra attacker for FCT. Kyrgyz has the ball at the top. He's got a shot to come through again. It's defended nicely, and he will retreat back into the defensive zone. And you see what Futsal Club of Toronto's doing. They're trying to get the guy sitting on the post for the tap-in out there, but the defender out there in the outlaws making sure he's marking tight, aware of exactly where he is to make sure that FCT doesn't get that tipping goal. It's a great off-the-ball movement from FCT at the top. Kovakovic part of it as well, trying to get that centering pass to come through to Ortel, and now coming back in the counter, as DeMarco tries to get back into the crease and does so in time and now just dropping back into their four defensive box here are the outlaws that'll allow FCT to push it back again into the offensive zone so we should see a lot of action staying in this offensive zone here for the second half for FCT as they continue with this extra attacker and they're just going to push the ball around the perimeter they got dangerous players out here you got Haragi who's been on the national team Fuentes makes the save on the shot from that far side, and then they'll try to come back in the counter to make it 8-0. Can't quite do so. Here's a counterattack back from Reed. Got numbers forward. He's just know he's going to slow it down instead. Great patience at the back end and instruction from Eduardo Jorge. You got Marcel Ortel out there to his left. Matias DeMarco out there to his right. These are three of the most dangerous players in Ontario. Ortel with a poke. Can't quite get it loose. Great job defensively that time from Diadine Abzi. Again, is having a strong game for the Outlaws. Irigay has it at the top. Can't get the poke this time. Goes to the outside to Ortel. Irigay again at the top. He's got some shot range to come just wide of the net. And again, a lot of those shots have come from that back end from Eduardo Irigay. Gets another one loose there. Fuentes sees it steer clear. And it'll be a toss coming from the crease from the outlaws. And Hadagoe was one of the best players, in my opinion, over at the CONCACAF Championships where Canada eliminated the U.S. in a two-game set, which was absolutely fantastic for the national program and a great job there by national team coach Kit Saladopoulos in recognizing the great talent because most of the national team is from Quebec and Ontario. Here comes Reed. Bosch comes in just over top of the crossbar. Tough pill to swallow again for FCT. Great ball forward from Reed, but unable to capitalize his Capone. Fuentes with a high arcing toss coming back in as Campesano is back in the crease. 
Looked like some contact there to hit the Outlaws player who's down past the goal line and a huge main advantage right now for FCT. They got two extra guys coming up on the Capone attack. Gets contacted by Fuentes and now they're going to call the foul on Fuentes and that's going to draw the ire of the Outlaws. Perhaps a yellow card coming to Camposano and it is, or excuse me, on Fuentes and it is. As you see FCT trying to on oh, Chavez Melendez looks hurt out there. The cloth coming on his head as he sits behind the goal line, but FCT was certainly not stopping 7-0 down. So now we're going to see a penalty shot right out here. And the last guy you want to face with that boot out there is Eduardo Hadagai. What an unbelievable boot this guy has. So we already saw one spot kick go in from Ibrahim Malouf of the Outlaws, and that was a great shot from him from the 10-meter mark going high over top of the shoulder of Camposano and here's an opportunity for FCT to get on the board for the first time here still in the early stages of the second half and Eduardo Hirage will take the kick waiting for the whistle now but Fuentes on his line to try to make the save and it's in and on the board now breaking the goose egg great shot there from Hirage as Chris mentioned hard spot kick there from him well, finally getting the monkey off the back out there. That might just be the trigger needed to get a couple of goals out here. Is this lead, you know, are they able to come back from a 7-0? Highly unlikely, but, you know, nothing's impossible in this sport, as we said. But, you know, for now, they just want to take it one goal at a time, come out and clip that lead out there. And worst case scenario, you got the goal difference being an impactful statement out there towards the championship match on Sunday afternoon. 7-1 so the lead now for the Sporting Outlaws. As FCT continuing with the extra attacker, here is DeMarco again. Drops it back to Hirage, the goal scorer. Push to the far side to or Ortel. Back to Hirage again at the top. DeMarco. DeMarco waiting for it again. Hirage goes to the far side. Reed. Back to Hirage at the top. He's got DeMarco to his right, and that's where they go. DeMarco. Back to the top again. Great ball movement again from FCT. They come to Hirage. DeMarco got options in front DeMarco shot is a handball and the referee right there to make the call it'll be outside the crease it looks like so it'll be a free kick for FCT but not a penalty kick to come outside the arc Chris well they do have a lot of specialists on the court right now that uh, are experts in the set plays out here so this could be just as dangerous in positioning against Sporting Outlaw so they definitely need to be tip top right now particularly with that far post where we see Isaiah Reed just waiting and sitting for some blood to tap it in past the goalkeeper. You see Hirage looking to the bench, wondering why Camposano is back on the floor and perhaps not having DeMarco as an extra attacker. But again, if they get caught up in a transition, it could be an easy chip from the defensive half for the Outlaws. And a spinning turnaround. Great set play called there by FCT, but read it nicely. At the back was number eight, Usama Lagel who's had a great game for the Outlaws, as many of the Outlaws have played very well so far here in this game. DeMarco back on the floor. Go to the top to Hirage. Over to the far side, here's Reed. Back to Hirage at the top. Trying to get the poke loose. DeMarco. Hirage. Back to DeMarco. Got some space to work with. Goes down into the corner. Ortel. Back to the top. Hirage winds and fires. Big save, Fuentes. And goes out of play. Great ball movement there, Chris, from FCT. That they're definitely just looking to slow it down, expose him, and chip this tree one chop at a time. Touch into the corner, Hirage back to the top to Reed, back to Hirage again. DeMarco still working it around at the top. Trying to get a lane to shoot through. DeMarco far side to Capone. Hirage fakes the shot, comes inside. Capone shot through, big save again, Fuentes. And DeMarco trying to volley that ball loose and goes off the leg of Laguel and out of play. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of this for the rest of this match out there. Just exposing this Pentagon attack out here. Capone drops it back to Hirage. DeMarco on the far side. Fakes the shot again, goes back to Capone. Trying to chip it up over top and not getting a good handle on that one at all was Francesco Capone on that far side. And we sit here, the defender with the ball right now, Nario, 19-year-old player, as we said, very composed, making sure that he knows exactly where Capone is at all times to make sure that he doesn't get that opportunity. Another great job there defensively by the 19-year-old kid out of Montreal. Capone still with it, trying to go to the outside. Great job by Nario, and they come back in the counter. Nario releases wide of the net. DeMarco going to leave that one 
as Nario tried to catch FCT napping there in that defensive transition. And Brendan Nario still can't believe this kid's under 20 years old out there. Six foot Montreal native has been very composed at the back and he's kind of kicking himself for not actually putting that ball into the open goal to make this an 8-1. Jorge, far side. Rodriguez out there now for FCT to make a substitution. Jorge back to DeMarco. DeMarco. Jorge at the top. Trying to get some space and getting closer to goal. Rodriguez on the far side. Jorge again. DeMarco. Pass far side. Held in on that far sideline. Rodriguez back to the top. Can they get a lane to shoot through? Shot. Nicely job taken there, but unable to keep it down. That goes well over top of the net. Hugo Rodriguez. Well, Capone is just hungry. We saw him miss that open wide shot on the far post about four or five minutes ago out there, but he's not knocking himself. He's very composed. He's sitting there. He just knows opportunity after opportunity is going to come, especially with this fifth attacker model that they've been employing right now, and eventually he feels he's going to get confident and notch one in to bring FCT back. Rodriguez lays it at the back end. Here's Ortel looking for the cross-court pass, but Jorge going to leave it. Now goes to DeMarco as they get past center court. DeMarco into the corner to Capone. Francesco Capone back to the top. Jorge has it just outside the three-point line. The toe poke is there, but it's blocked, and great to see Misho back on the court, Chris. Yeah, we were really hoping it wasn't a serious injury. He's such a great prospect, great player, and unbelievable leader for this Sporting Outlaws side. In my opinion, he's been one of the top players in this match, if not the top player in the match. And, you know, you're always worried about concussions, especially with this futsal ball. So it's really great to see him back in the lineup here and give his team a good morale boost again. DeMarco collects on the near side, goes far side to Ortel. Now Hirage again at the top. Misho dropping back in to defend. Capone. DeMarco. Back again to Ortel, into the corner. Here's Rodriguez, back to Jorge. Rodriguez has DeMarco to the outside, and they'll go to DeMarco. Now Jorge, trying to poke it through, gets it there, and it's snipped aside by Nario. And Misho getting clipped up by Jorge, and that's going to be a foul on the FCT's number three. And, and FCT's goal scorer, it still remains 7-1, though, Chris. A lot of ball movement from FCT, though. Well, very, very quick kicking out there, and FCT were caught kind of napping out there, and they were very fortunate that that shot wasn't buried. Good to see some nice hands, though, from DeMarco making the save as the interim goalkeeper there. Uh, usually when you're an elite uh, shooter, you're usually an elite stopper as well out there. Obviously, you want to see him a little more up front as opposed to wearing that orange goalkeeper jersey coming in, but you get what you get in this scenario. Misho taking the corner for the Outlaws. It was back to the point to Nario. Nario has it go off his foot and go out of play. So that'll be a turnover, an inbound play, and some more switches coming up top from FCT. Some tired legs after a high-octane offensive sequence as making the switch back in will be Quante Abbott-Hill-Smith, who will be posting down right inside on Fuentes and trying to get some garbage goals coming in off a rebound. Come to DeMarco. Back top to Rodriguez. They go far side to Ortel. Great move inside, and Capone can't quite get a touch on it. Make that number 14. Mario Kavakovic is back out there as well. Yeah, just under 11 and a half remaining here in the second half. And FCT, as we said, they're just going to employ this all game long, trying one chop at a time to take down this mighty Sporting Outlaws tree. Ortel, back to Rodriguez, now to Ortel again. Ortel, Rodriguez, DeMarco. DeMarco gets it through. Here's an option to shoot through Ortel. Can't get it loose. DeMarco. Back to Rodriguez, good ball movement again by FCT, but again, they have that extra attacker. Fuentes gets the shot through, makes the save, as DeMarco goes hard down to the floor. Just gonna slow it down now, are the Outlaws more than happy with this six goal cushion, but could be looking for more. Here they come back in the counter. Shot through, another big save there from DeMarco, as it'll go out for a corner. Not gonna pull Camposano back in, as DeMarco has made a couple of great saves with the hands in desperation. Back to the back end to Nario. Far side to Misho. Stretch passes up top. And it'll last deflect it out from FCT. So it'll be an inbound possession upcoming for the Sporting Outlaws. Yeah, and the Outlaws, they're just trying to stretch this court very, very far and make sure that they're killing the clock as much as humanly possible. They want to—they don't want to be sitting on their heels as they see the fifth attacker, especially with the likes of Matias DeMarco coming at them. It's not a favorable position for many teams, so good job on the Outlaws so far for keeping them at bay. 
Brandon Simois out there now for FCT as well. DeMarco going to keep that orange jersey on and provide the extra attack. Simois on that far side. Back to Rodriguez. DeMarco. The two guys in sight, including Kovacovic, who's got a huge frame in front of Fuentes. DeMarco. Got an option to the far side. Back to DeMarco. Rodriguez at the top. Taking over that spot from Jorge, who's on the bench. Rodriguez. Back down inside. Now Rodriguez just outside the arc. Going to get the shot through from DeMarco. The poke from Abbott Hill Smith as DeMarco goes down hard. Perhaps looking for a call. Not going to get it. Rodriguez collects. Push to the far side. In push. Great movement. And off the post and in. And FCT takes advantage. 7-2, Chris. As we said, one chip at a time out there. And now they've got two goals back out there. We're seeing a 7-2 scoreline. And ultimately, they're going to keep coming, doing the same thing again and again. As we saw now, Camposano coming back in net on behalf of DeMarco out there. So, FCT, if they can chop this down, 7-3, 7-4. Who knows where you can get with five, six minutes left in the game. In the defensive zone now, trying to just clear that ball out. Abzi and turns it over inside. Here's Rodriguez. Rodriguez going to hold. We'll play it back to Camposano. Has to be quick to clear that out of harm's reach. As Samoas going to hold, wait for Camposano to get off. And now DeMarco right back in the action. Rodriguez on the far side will collect again at the top goes down into Samoas in the corner Rodriguez to DeMarco he's got Abbott Hill Smith far side that's a great pass in from DeMarco can't capitalize on the stretch ball from Misho can't get through Samoas wants that one back oh that was definitely a 7-3 opportunity out there and honestly Outlaws very very fortunate not to have that go in but they continue the offensive pressure here Rodriguez to DeMarco, to Samoas, looking to make amends for that gaffe. DeMarco gets back to it in time, and Rodriguez will come back into the offensive zone. So I'm watching number 18, sitting on the far post there, Kwani Smith, just sitting there right behind this defender. Defender has no idea where he is right now, and maybe he's actually not focused enough as the ball goes right underneath his foot, but his movement behind the defender definitely going to be uh, causing some issues if this keeps up for outlaws yeah, just a little maybe a frustration or lack of focus there from smith was in a position to collect in that far corner and perhaps get a check ball back for a streaking attacker but lets that ball slide under his foot no harm no foul as it's back in the offensive zone right now and smith going to make his way to the bench nope as he'll stay on thought maybe he was going to make his way and smith has the ball now and it's rodriguez smith in the corner they go to the other side to Samoas. Back to Rodriguez. DeMarco. Rodriguez. DeMarco. Samoas again. Brandon Samoas. Plays it inside. And it's deflected out of play. And it's going to be a corner kick upcoming now as Rodriguez will collect in the far corner. Samoas. Brandon Samoas over to DeMarco. Smith. Samoas back, good movement again. Rodriguez looking for an option. Samoas, far side to Rodriguez. DeMarco now. Samoas. They can't get the switch across, and it's another goal. FCT continuing to chip away there within four. Uh, that was the third defensive lapse that I've counted so far on Abzi. Number 17 for Sporting Outlaws. Wasn't marking his man as tight as he should have out there. And definitely taking advantage was FCT to bring it back to 7-3. If any consolation, Chris, there's positive momentum generating here now from FCT. And again, they're chipping away at that goal differential. Yeah, and 7.49 left. Quite a lot of time left in this game, that's for sure. And uh, Outlaws are definitely going to want to come and press and make something of this. Coming back in the counter. They lose it again. Here's Samoas. Going to try to hold up. And Samoas goes down hard trying to sell the foul. No contact whatsoever on that play. So Abzi going to take the inbound play on the sideline. Trying to get him to be perhaps a little sharper in the defensive zone, as Chris mentioned. And here comes Misho. Shot through. Big save from Camposano on the rebound there from Abzi. Shoots it wide of the net. That was a nasty left foot follow-up there by Abzi. And as we see Camposano coming out now for Matias DeMarco, FCT's just going to come at them again and again with this fifth attacker until they just keep getting more goals. Trailing by four. A little over seven minutes left. As Matias DeMarco tries to get FCT back in this. Rodriguez, far side. You see Misho trying to get his outlaws into a position defensively. DeMarco has it again on the near wing. 
Rodriguez at the top. They push far side to Samoas. Now in tight, can't get the flick through in the corner was Kovacevic as Camposano has to come back in right away. And now, Chris, I think they're going to try to get Camposano back in as quickly as they can and not force DeMarco into a position. They come back in the counter. Rodriguez outside to Smith. Smith keeps it on the deck, and it's a big save from Fuentes, and it's still inbounds. Well, I think the inbounds taken there on the far side of the court by the Outlaws, he wasn't happy because he didn't feel the FCT player was giving him his required five meters, but the referee was counting, so he felt forced to give it, and then FCT turned that turnover into a goal-scoring opportunity. Kovacevic trying to get that stretch ball through. It's a good attempt there from Kovacevic to get it up to Smith, but unable to collect, and now it's going to be a sideline possession upcoming for the Outlaws. Fuentes. Pushes to the far side to Michaud. Chip up to Abzi. Now it's inside. Here's Kovacevic looking for help from Smith. Smith getting pushed down, and that's going to be a delayed foul. FCT will get possession just over top of center court. A little bit of a late whistle there by Octavian Iliuta, but ultimately the right call. So DeMarco will stay on in the extra attacker, especially now that it's in the offensive zone. Trailing 7-3. Rodriguez plays it into Samoas. Rodriguez, again, at the top. Comes to DeMarco. DeMarco comes inside from Samoas, and it'll get past Rodriguez, and he'll have to regroup. Has to be careful. There's pressure in up top now. And that's just going to be cleared out. That'll drop DeMarco back into the, the keeper's arc. And it's just chipped forward from the Outlaws. Trying to get this clock to trickle away and stay in their favor. It's into the corner. Still no call. And now finally the ball goes out of play. And that's going to be a goal kick for FCT. And yeah, we're going to see here DeMarco. Not the obvious goaltender as we know Camposano on the national team. But DeMarco, him together have absolutely phenomenal. Oh, here we go. And that's the counterattack coming back from the Outlaws. And they extend their lead once again. Just when you want to share some wisdom out there, this game goes so quickly in the Outlaws, sucking a little wind out of the sails there of FCT with a quick, quick counter and a nice result that puts them up 8-3, and definitely this hurts FCT's chances from coming back to get in this game and at least salvage a point. They're trailing by five now, 8-3 the lead. Camposano back in the crease, and it's a shot from range. It's a good save from the goalkeeper and getting taken down. Jorge in, the, in his defensive box. And that'll allow DeMarco to come back on as they come out of the defensive zone. Reed in up top, Kovacevic on the far side. DeMarco, Jorge at the top. Some more substitutions incoming for FCT. Rodriguez posts into the corner. Back to Jorge at the top. Comes to DeMarco, he's got space to shoot. Ops to keep. Pushes it into the corner to Reed. And it's out of bounds and mishandled there by Reed as the frustrations continuing to mount here for FCT. Yeah, and it was good pressure there by the Outlaws to contain out there and put that pressure on the young Isaiah Reed, number 10 there in red for FCT. And now going to get possession with just about five minutes remaining here in the second half. So it's still a five, back to a five-goal cushion. That's a great job there by Camposano to keep the play alive after it flicked off the head of there of Reed. And keep the play rolling here, and here's... Jorge at the top, back in the defensive zone. Trying to get Reed on an off-the-ball move. And now Jorge going to collect. Pokes it back, and it's a turnover. Here comes the Outlaws. Back the other way. Left shot through, score! And Chris, that should do it. Well, that's definitely going to be a dagger in the hearts of FCT fans out there. I'll tell you what, an absolutely sensational finish we saw there from Abzi, who made a couple of defensive errors early here in the second half, but has more than made up for it with some offensive prowess and an Fantastic job in taking this lead, extending it to 9-3 there, Kyle. 9-3, six goal cushion for the Quebec champions. And again, the crowd on looking that knows this FCT team, knows that this is a huge result for the Quebec champs and a shock around the futsal community, especially here in Ontario. Well, we're seeing Coach Nicolas Beaumet trying to get his troops up on the bench, cheering now, seeing a little bit of an ignition like they had in the first half and really putting it to FCT right now with a six goal lead. Rodriguez chips it in over top, and that's going to be a turnover. Going to let it just trickle out, and then it's going to be on the sideline. And all they're going to say is a goal kick instead. So stretch again from Fuentes going up top. Headed back nicely there as Abzi forces it. It gets turned over, though. Here comes Capone. 
Francesco Capone, that gets turned over and it's a nice save at the back end for Nario. Nario gets pushed off the ball from Capone. Try to go across, looking for that run stretch to come through there to Khalil Naji, but it goes out of play. Nario doing an excellent job defensively and then to lead that 3v2 attack. Very fortunate that they didn't have the man on the far post, otherwise it would have been 10-3 for the Outlaws. DeMarco back in, gets the ball from Jorge. Jorge again to DeMarco. The two trading passes again as Michel creates pressure up top. Reed gets the ball on the far side to continue the movement around. Ortel with some good off the ball movement from FCT. And now Fuentes collects. Four minutes remaining here in the second half in a 9-3 lead for the Quebec champions. And Abzi just getting a little anxious there. He just wants to add to his goal tally out there. The tall two-way player really making an impact now here in the last two minutes for the sporting. Ortel in the defensive half as, or, as DeMarco will now come up. Lays it back for Jorge, who's been quarterbacking a lot of this extra attacker from the back end. And he gets a great shot from range, but it goes wide to Fuentes, who wisely leaves that one alone, and it goes out of play for a goal kick. Certainly, well, the whole scenario right there is we saw Isaiah Reed just coming in from the far left post out there. He just wanted to sit, tap it in, and that's what FCT's been doing. So Saskatchewan, I see Coach Jaime Meza right across the court analyzing, taking notes, and seeing exactly how this is going to go for their game tomorrow afternoon. Looking for a handball, and Ortel was the out, were the outlaws, but not going to get it there, but they do have possession. They try to extend that one through. Here's an odd man rush back the other way for FCT. Here's Capone. Holding, now leaves for DeMarco. They try to keep it on the offensive half. Just keeping it in there was DeMarco Ortel. Back to Capone. He's got Reed on that far corner. Here's Jorge. DeMarco. Shot from range off the post. Great shot from DeMarco, but they recollect. Now Capone again. Ortel. DeMarco. Jorge. DeMarco. Shot, big save again from Fuentes, rebound Fuentes again, and Reed trying to get there on the rebound, Fuentes covers up. And these defenders out here at Outlaws really need to make sure that they're being aware, otherwise FCT can come back, but they're sitting right at the top of the crease while you have two FCT players sitting near the goal line. Dangerous stuff there from Sporting Outlaws. The time trickling away here on FCT. If was never in doubt before, looks as though the Outlaws are going to get the victory here in the first game of this tournament. And it's deflected out of play. And FCT will come back with a play out of the defensive zone from DeMarco. Plays it off to Jorge. It's probably a good time to plug the match tomorrow at 11 a.m. as Saskatchewan make their first appearance here at the national tournament versus FCT. And then, of course, Quebec will be playing Saskatchewan later on at 6 p.m. All games, of course, here at Queen's University. Great touch inside from Reed to DeMarco, and then falling down there was Ortel, but they retain possession, Capone, back to Jorge, he's got space to shoot, goes to DeMarco instead, back to Jorge, and losing again, trying to push it to the far side to Capone, but to no avail. Yeah, the frustration there of conceding nine goals, something unheard of for this club out there has certainly gotten it to them. And now the ref, Octavian Iliota from Saskatchewan calling for the towel. Two minutes and 19 seconds left here in this second half. And Chris, we mentioned the game coming in tomorrow. And obviously not a great performance here from FCT. Found themselves down early and often in the first half and had to play catch up from there. Showing shines or glimpses of brilliance, but we'll see if they can come back with a vengeance tomorrow against Saskatchewan in a game where they clearly want to rebound. Well, they're definitely a more experienced team than the Saskatchewan side, without question. But the experience of a head coach really helps out and having... Jaime Meza out there in Saskatchewan helping them out in Saskatoon and Regina has been an absolute godsend for them. And FCT is actually without their head coach that led them in the provincial tournament, Luis Fonseca, who was just issued a three-year suspension earlier today uh, for, uh, you know, regrettable incidents there in the uh, provincial finals. So maybe that's obviously hurt them. And, you know, as we saw a 9-3 scoreline, certainly would have helped to have him back at the helm. Far side to Reed, trying to trim this deficit and get back into some more positive frames of mind before heading into tomorrow. Reed get the shot through. Not going to win the corner. It's going to be a clearance coming out of the goaltender's arc. From Fuentes. Pushes it forward. Naji Can't get it around Capone. And we'll turn it over. Here's Hildegay. 
And now DeMarco will come forward once again. Here's Ortel on the far side. Jorge gaining center court. Pass to Ortel. Chip now into the corner. It's a chance. Jorge comes to DeMarco. Reed again in the corner. Some good off the ball movement from Reed. Back to Jorge. Go far side. Ortel. Jorge. Ortel again. And Michaud continuing to rally the troops defensively. You can hear him from up top in the rafters where we're calling the game, and he's an absolute rock, yelling at his guys, keeping them in formation, saying, guys, let's contain this 9-3 lead, maybe even build upon it, and this is an absolute leader if we've ever seen one. Third oldest guy on this team, only 24 years of age. <laughs> Unbelievable stuff there from Shaquille Michelle. So under two minutes to go now, Chris, in a game that looks out of reach at this point in what should be a big, pivotal victory for the Outlaws and they come back in the counter is FCT but for this 9-3 game right now who is your player of the game from the Outlaws I think it goes without question for me it's going to be Shaquille Michaud for all his leadership out there his ability to come back from what looked like a nasty little injury and his uh, defensive prowess has been spectacular that's my man of the match a hard foul from Capone so that's going to be possession two the Outlaws, and again, we mentioned Michaud's got the captain's band on. He's been excellent in this upset victory here for the Outlaws, and we'll see if they can carry this momentum over into their second match of the tournament, which will come tomorrow night, 7 p.m. or 6 p.m. Eastern time, uh, as they will take on Saskatchewan, the Saskatoon Olympia, who will have their first game tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Eastern time, as they will take on a very frustrated FCT. Into the back end, Capone, over center court. Capone, great shot there from him. Gets that poke loose and that ball coming in with great pace there from Capone, but an even better save from Fuentes. Uh, Fuentes has been on par out there. Any goals that have kind of gone in haven't really been his fault. His reflexes have been spot on out there. Not the tallest keeper out in the land, but boy, his reaction time and his positioning has been spot on for this game. So under a minute to go now. Again, just a formality here to play out the string of this second half. The best FCT can hope for is to try to get a, a goal or another goal or two to try to trim their goal differential down a little bit before their match tomorrow morning against Saskatoon Olympia. But going to be hard to do. Fuentes has been sharp. And as you said, Chris, a lot of the goals that FCT have scored have been ones that have been in tight. And that spot kick as well. No question about it. And one has to wonder if they're going to come in against Saskatchewan tomorrow employing this fifth attacker to try and cut down that deficit. If FCT does lose tomorrow, they are eliminated from this competition. Ortel to the back end, and the shot comes in now. And a shot from range, and will come through. So, Chris, if FCT does, in fact, lose tomorrow morning to Saskatoon Olympia, that will set up what will be the final between Saskatoon Olympia and our champs from Quebec. Is there any anything worth playing for other than just psychology heading into that final if it's already been predetermined after tomorrow morning's match? All about pride. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. People want to make an impact and say, hey, we want to beat you not just once, we're going to come out and do it twice. So every single match tomorrow, first again at 11 a.m., then 6 p.m., big time games make sure you're tuning in here on Canada Soccer's YouTube page to make sure you catch all the action and then of course that final at noon on Sunday is going to be spectacular no matter who is in that final final few seconds going to be ticking away here as Camposano collects in the goaltender's arc and will push it forward to Reed and they just get turned over there at center court looking for a deflection or a touch in the final again time ticking away as Ortel puts it forward Three seconds left to go here and going to hold on to possession now. And Chris, that will do it as the celebration begins on the bench for the Quebec champions, the Sporting Outlaws FC, a big-time 9-3 victory over FCT. Biggest shock of the futsal season, in my opinion, but I guess those in Quebec, they have built up that PLFQ. Thank you to the big developments there from Kit Saladopoulos and the new technical director of Manitoba Soccer Association, Mike Vitalano, who's now out there, but had a big hand in building the Quebec futsal scene. Ontario was dominating for years, the same way that BC dominated in the 80s out there when Charlie Cazetto and his team uh, built futsal out there first with Futsal Canada, but now we're seeing this development across the country. First here with Quebec's dominance in this game and their high performance league out there, but also now with Saskatchewan finally saying, hey, we're not, we're not just ready to play futsal, we're ready to put our money where our mouths are, make the flight out here to Toronto, and then the 
to Kingston and see what we can do and where we are on the litmus test compared to these teams. So ultimately, this is just going to be a great development this entire weekend, and I can't wait, honestly, to get started again tomorrow. It's a highly anticipated match coming into this game, our first one of the tournament. Kickoff here was at 7 p.m. Eastern time. As we see limping off here um, is number 15, Muhammad Farsi, who was taken down hard in the early going, and uh, he is not in good shape right now, but hopefully we'll be able to go tomorrow limping off the court, but a spectacular victory here for the Quebec champions, perhaps easing the pain a little bit there for Farsi as his team absolutely dominant tonight, making a statement to the rest of the teams in this tournament. Quebec futsal on the map now, Chris, and we'll see what happens tomorrow morning. Our first game will take place at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Thanks for joining us here tonight on the campus of Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario. It is the 2017 Futsal Canadian Championships. Kyle Campo joined alongside by Chris Fernandez. We will be back on the air tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Saskatoon Olympia taking on Futsal Club Toronto. We will see you then.